What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Stay Hot. I'm Bladen Kirk, joined, as always, by my two favorite co-hosts of all time, and Matthew Sponauer and Theo Ash. We have a great episode planned for you all today. We're going to talk about the Dolphins' new additions and the implications that has had around the league, talk about some NBA stuff, and then wrap things up with uh, the Sweep 16 approaching in March Madness. So we're going to hit on that as well. But before we get into all of that stuff, Matt, Theo, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. I'm looking forward to the weekend. Shoulder hurts though, but outside of that, I'm rolling. Were you, it was uh, Cincinnati. It was Cincinnati's pro day oh, today, yeah. and Matt was Matt was throwing the ball all yeah, around was, and oh. showing out to it. He already got drafted by the Lions, so I don't know why he needed to do all that. But he went I was to coach trying, up to, get, was trying to help Ritter, the receivers get some work in. You know. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. Had that, to coach up Desmond Ritter too. Right. Yeah, I had to show him how to throw it. <laughs> I'm doing all right. Uh, continue my scouting process I, I reviewed khalil shakir today and that's yes, someone who i've gotten requested to review on People every single like every single post i've ever made since the super bowl ended i've gotten one khalil shakir comment yep. so i finally got to review him and i like him a lot and he's really good and we didn't talk about him last time but what I is like the because like it's kind of like a gag right like it's a little bit of a joke because i it see is. a ridiculous like what is it? Is it just like a totally random person? I think it's someone who goes to Boise State. Gotcha. Yes. I think it that, is a Boise that's who, State. That's who you would think, right? Student but, asked me. But I'm glad that you requested him so much because Khalil Shakir is very legit and good. I was trying to like think of something like negative to say, and there's really not that much there. And it's like he's he's one of those guys where it's like okay, he doesn't maybe look like this dominant, dominant NFL wide receiver, but when it comes to like, okay, what is he like bad at? Like there's no real glaring weaknesses. So I was a big fan of Khalil Shakir. I think his NFL comp should be me. (laughs) No weaknesses, but not quite an NFL talent or not quite a dominant NFL talent. All right, all right. (laughs) Well, you know, just a reminder to everyone to make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. You know, we're always trying to keep growing there as well. And uh, no one's wearing the Stay Hot merch today, but uh, I was yesterday. You were, but you could I was. be. You could the be listener. if you bought some. You could be you. wearing the Stay Hot merch today if you went on over to uh, I think it's like shop.bluewirepods.com. We're right on the front page. Um, so make sure you. Co- no way. <laughs> make sure you cop some Stay Hot merch, and of course, subscribe to the YouTube channel. No one's birthday, but we'd appreciate it. As always, let's just hop right in. The Miami Dolphins traded for Tyreek Hill in a move that is... That's (laughs) a big trade. (laughs) No way. I can't believe that happened. Dude, it was just so funny. (laughs) Like somebody, somebody commented on one of my tweets and like, imagine just like waking up like 10 PM Pacific time. And all of a sudden Tyree kill isn't on the chiefs anymore. Imagine that. Happened <laughs> to you. You, know, you tweeted like 45 Bro. minutes later. Like I just woke up. What happened? <laughs> I woke up like half an hour before you did Theo. Like <laughs> it's like anytime I take a nap, something crazy happens. If you and I both happen to be taking a nap, it's like pandemonium. <laughs> Well, well, Nico, well, elite take, well, elite takes Nico is in math class is always when uh, things tend to go down. I always love when he records something and he's clearly in like a school bathroom because <laughs> he has to say something about it. I have never made was, a TikTok in a school bathroom. <laughs> this is that's just uh, I love that. But this was a school bathroom caliber trade. I mean, right, I it's could, just insane. It's insane. I've never seen a trade quite like it in that it just came out of no way. Like I just woke up. There was no rumblings about it. There was no signs. There yeah. was no anything. It just, I woke up and it's, I thought it was a fake Schefter thing and it's like, okay, I guess I've got to process this at least with Adams and Adams really surprised me. I didn't see Adams getting traded at that point at all, but at least with him, it was like, we knew that, he was unhappy with his contract for like a year. Like yes. there was a, there, like for a year we knew he posted, this is the last dance. Like he posted last dance stuff on his story. So it's like, right. at least there is like, okay, I guess there were some signs, but this was just like, absolutely. There was know. absolutely zero signs. There was yeah. no, like, at least that I saw that this was even going to remotely happen. And then all of a sudden the first report comes out that like, Hey, there's some contract problems. This might not end well. Three hours later, he's off the team. Yeah. Uh, so it's just in, insanely, insanely fast how it all happened. And um, I'm not sure what to think of it. 
I have I have mixed feelings about it. I mean, the Chiefs got a good price back for him. All things considered, yeah, based on yeah. The it's like you weren't going to get two first. No one's paying two first to pay even Tyreek Hill thirty million dollars a year. It's it's just too much. First and second, what was it? Two fourths and a fifth. You, Something you like with that. that. Yeah. Yes, it was. Yeah, and my thought on it is, I hope everybody thought this through. Because it feels like they didn't. It feels like... It feels like it was made a decision made in rushed. three hours. It feels like a decision made in three... <laughs> like, I hope Tyreek thought this through. I hope the Chiefs thought this through. I hope the Dolphins thought this through. Because, like, man, you didn't have to trade them that. Like, okay, th- we have seen guys be unhappy with their contracts. It's not like he's a free agent, right? He's a free... Like, Devontae Adams, I get, you know, there's been a lot of scenarios where someone wouldn't play under the tag. Like, that's, that's something I get. But it, we weren't even at that point. It, he had a year left on his deal, so like he would have had to sit out and and dishonor his his true contract that he signed two or three years ago. And we've seen guys like be unhappy, and as training camp wears on, they they give they give in, or, or there's some deal made, or like something changes. There was they didn't even call his bluff, like they, not even until I mean, there's a if you wanted picks this draft, you had a month to work things out yeah. before the yeah. draft, and you still yeah. could've, you could have traded him on draft day if you really wanted that. But like for things to happen in three hours, I I, I, I just feel like that's just a little hasty, right? And, I, I just don't understand. And my question was, did anyone win this? Did anyone? I'm not. I don't love it for bro. Any I don't love thinking, it for the Chiefs. There, it's not terrible. But I don't love it for them. I get it for Tyreek. I get it. Like the money is like the 120 million dollar yeah. contract, right? I mean, yeah, it's not that bad. I, I assume both of you made TikToks about this. Yeah. I didn't yeah. get to see. Were your comments just like, like, how were your, com- how, what was like the response? Cause I don't know what, I assume both of you I had made one like before very similar it things. To- okay. I made one, but I didn't make one. Most after. of my TikTok comments were on the video I made like a month and a half ago where I was like, man, the Dolphins, I don't think they could be very good next year. <laughs> Most of mine, that video tended to uh, hit people's For You page after the Tyreek Hill deal. And I got a bunch of this age like milk comments. But here's what I think about like for all the teams. I think for the for the Dolphins, I don't think it's it's an interesting here's it, it comes across to me as Tyreek Hill wants to live in Miami. That is like my my takeaway yeah. is he was just as like he's he's from Miami. He's a Miami, he's like a Miami type of guy. He's kind of a big city like type of personality. It seems like a Florida dude. And it just came across to me as whoa, I want it. I'm bored. I want to go to Miami. That's what it came across to me as. And you know, they asked him at the press conference today, like, oh, did you ever like think about going to the Jets because they also had a trade package that was cleared by the Chiefs. And he's like, the Jets? Oh, God, no. He basically said (laughs) it was always going to be Miami is what he said. So I hope Hill knows what he's getting into. You know, I hope that he wasn't just like, I want to go live in Miami instead of Kansas City. And I'm just going to, I'm not going to play for the Chiefs anymore. I'm just going to like, if that was the logic that drove the whole decision, it just seems it, and to me, it kind of seems like it was. Like, I hope that more thought went into it than that. I, I jokingly put out the tweet of like, "Oh, Tyreek Hill when he realizes he has to play with Tua, and it's Odell." But like, is is it that different than like it's Odell? It's a little bit the, different because it's, it's a little bit different because I think the the. The, the Dolphins want to be the 49ers, right? That's going to be their blueprint. Right. That's the team that they're trying to build. The, like people are like, and I've made joke. I made jokes about playing with Tua too. Okay. I've like, I did uh, <laughs> my random <laughs> slander videos are always the ones that do the best, like on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like I make fun of it too, but like real talk, they are like his deep speed is not going to be wasted because it's not going to be used vertically. It's going to be used more horizontally. And it's not like he's not going to, be able to run because the whole goal of the of the 49ers or now the Miami offense is just like quick hitters over the middle and then yeah. just get a bunch of guys who are difficult to tackle and get it to them as fast as possible right which was kind of to his offense in at Alabama right with a stacked wide receiving core a lot of RPOs a lot of quick hitters and let Jerry Judy Henry Ruggs Jalen Waddle go to work and you know 49ers was Kittle 
Debo, Ayuk. And so mm-hmm. now they're, they're kind of do, doing the same thing where it's like, okay, we're to a, to is limited, but he can run this offense to a, to a degree. Like most quarterbacks could run this offense, right. but like he can run this offense and it's not like, it's just going to get wasted. My, you know? I, my concern is that like, it's like, okay, they're going to try and this 49ers ask, are they as good as the 49ers were? Maybe not yet. No. I, I, I think are, are I think, they even as good as like the Browns in in twenty nine or twenty twenty when they were trying to like do that play action system? The, yes, because Baker is not good as good as Tua even. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> Baker can't. Yeah, no, ba- Tua at least has decent pocket presence and poise. I think Duke Luca <laughs> Luca Tua Luca Baker. You know, <laughs> Lu- I think Tua at least has like some short accuracy and some like some composure under pressure that he would be better running this type of offense than even Baker would be. So they weren't Maybe. and this the 49ers offense is not the same as as what the Browns were doing but, even. So but like, it is a little my, bit of a better I don't a know. My situation. my concern is just like my concern with bringing up the Browns was like at some point like Stefanski was running this offense to like accommodate Baker, right? Yes. And the Dolphins are doing this to accommodate Tua. Right? That is the idea. But at some point Stefanski got bored. And when Stefanski got bored, he stopped doing the play action stuff. What happens if McDaniel just gets bored? I, I don't. I guess I don't. That's not. That's not how the coaches work. They don't get I, bored of their like, scheme. Like, they want to grow and evolve. The, the right, difference that's, between that's, this like, and the Browns is of, that no. if it doesn't work out, they're not going to pick Tua. They're not, they, oh, if it's between choose Tyreek or Tua, they'll choose Tyreek. The Browns yes. chose Baker, and that's where they were wrong with Odell. I yes. don't think I'm I don't sure think the Dolphins will do the same thing. That's probably a and valid and thing the Dolphins that. they don't really have any w- like reason to really upgrade from Tua at this point. Yes, they maybe could have made an offer for um, Russ, or maybe they could have made an offer for I Matt Ryan. I was like, man, Matt Ryan. If the Dolphins been good. had Matt Ryan right now, that would be, I'd be really pumped about them. I think then you'd you'd see it, but. With Tua, I think so too. That's 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 what the mistake I think they made. Every other deal, it's like Winston, maybe, but like he probably Winston's just was going to go back to the Saints no matter yeah. what. And with everyone else, it's like you know you're not going to Garoppolo. You're not trying to be the 49ers that much. <laughs> Wince, like no. But I thought Matt Ryan was a deal they could have beaten. Yeah, I think Matt Ryan in that. I mean, we've seen Matt Ryan in a Kyle Shanahan type of offense before. Yeah, uh, yeah. He won MVP. Won MVP. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that would have been a nice addition if they could have done that. But, like, Tua, uh, you do still – I mean, he did improve from year one to year two a little bit, yeah. his numbers. Yeah. He never got, like, benched like he was getting – so it's not like you absolutely needed – like, they went 9-8 and eight with him. Obviously, a lot of that was against bad teams. But overall, I think, like, the, the Dolphins – the Dolphins have the ceiling to be the 49ers now. I mean, it's not like Garoppolo is any is like that good and they went to the NFC Championship game. Like the offense has 49ers potential now. Um they don't have Trent Williams who had maybe one of the best offensive lineman seasons ever. Um but like they do have the high-end talent and the quarterback and the scheme to to become that and become a top 10 offense even with Tua because if if they can have that same type of success in that scheme. They have the guys to do it hypothetically now. So I like the move for the Dolphins a, a decent amount. Yeah, they did give up a lot for him. But, you know, if yeah, you I are do, rolling with Tua, yeah, you, you I, have to I agree. Give up. It's, a, it's a good move to bring in Tyreek Hill. Like, regardless of how, like, I, I agree that it's, uh, my concern is just like Tua. That's That's it. <laughs> Like yeah, I, but I'm not like as concerned I, with him in this offense. That's my thing. It's like I don't I, think Tua is going to be this huge detriment in the current situation. Yeah. It's not like it's not like you'd have like Baker trying to run a, a Belichick quarterback system. It's not like this total like liability in in an offense that asks them to do a but, lot. It's but not. If, it's but if the Dolphins in like but if the Dolphins in two years haven't won a Super Bowl. They're going to want to expand that offense and they're going to want to do more. And I don't think two is capable of it. 
I don't think so either, but they have multiple years of Tyree kill and, and they can move on, make moves for, to move on from two yeah. in the next coming years. I, they didn't this season and it's like, okay, I get it. Maybe you could be a Super Bowl contender if you did, but like they, it, this, it doesn't have to happen this very second. I, I do think like, what have I said about Tyree kill before? A little bit. What have I said about Tyree kill before that he's the most dangerous wide receiver in football, that he's the best wide receiver in football. You're going to have him for a couple more seasons. It's not just, win right now for the Dolphins. I, I do think that this move is going to be solid for them. They even have two first next year, yeah. don't they? I believe they do. Yes. They yeah. two yes. So it's, year. I think they're kind of maybe spending some of the, some of the extra capital they have here. And if you're going to, if you're going to, look, uh, you know, $30 million a first and a second for any one guy is always a, a tough, but for Tyreek Hill, it's not so bad. My question is, do you think the, you think the Dolphins make the playoffs now? So I think it's it's early. I'll say that because we don't we don't know what every other team is going to do. But it's it's my tough. it is tough. Is are either of these teams going to make the playoffs? I think <laughs> is an interesting question. You I know, think, I think that the Chiefs still do. Yeah, you think Mahomes carries them? I think they have two firsts, two seconds, two thirds, two fourths. They kind of have a lot of draft capital. So yes. we're looking we're looking at the Chiefs roster. In between the time that they give up Tyreek Hill to save salary cap and get draft picks, but before they've been able to use that salary cap they saved and the draft picks that they've gotten. So the roster is as bad as it will be right this it second. It is. Yeah. But no matter what they do, this is going to be the worst Chiefs team we've seen in the Mahomes era, right? And, I think that we can agree Maybe on they that. don't win the division, but... You know, I don't think they have to. It's a bad time for them to be the without Tyreek Hill because the rest of the division rules. Yes, and, uh, <laughs> they've got they've got six really tough games on their schedule because of it. Um, but yes, I still think they make the playoffs. It goes, and they're they're they got look. It goes. Their home opponents are Broncos, Raiders, Chargers, Jaguars. Easy win. And then look at these other teams: Titans, Rams, Seahawks, Bills. <sighs> Three tough ones away. Broncos, Raiders, Chargers again. And then you've got the Bengals, the 49ers, the Cardinals, the Bucks, the Colts, and the Texans. That there are tough, that is a tough that's one. That's really, really, really hard. There are two free wins there against the Texans and the Jaguars. And the rest are all losable. And you look at what their offense, like their offense looked really bad. Like looked it was tough sledding for that offense last year with maybe the best wide receiver in football. And someone I consider to be the best wide receiver in football. I think what they're going to do next year is you look at what they've got. Kelsey, Juju, Marquez, Valdez, Scantling, Mikkel Hardman. Yes. To me, that is an offense that is probably going to rein it in a little bit and not be quite as they're going to try to be a little bit more precise than they have been in the past probably hopefully a little bit less of a focus on you know the the backyard playground ball because you know kelsey juju like juju especially is not this big downfield threat he's more of a, a slot like guy at this point tough slot guy it, it just is gonna like they're gonna try to have they're gonna need to be a lot more precise and methodical and that's what they really struggled with doing last year so i really think that the chiefs make missing the playoffs is a is a strong possibility even with because you, you, all those picks are are not going to add up to Tyree Kill, and I don't know, I don't know. It it it's going to be really tough, and I haven't made my my projections yet. But I kind of think I don't. I I I. If they go and draft a receiver, though, you look at that offense and you're like, still pretty great. Yeah, still yeah. pretty fantastic. Still Good great offensive, offensive line. line. Okay, yeah. what what picks do they have? They have two first twenty nine thirty. Yeah. <sighs> okay, you can do something with that. You can do something, but I don't know. It's going to be the outside of quarterback and even with all the other great quarterbacks in that division, I, I think it's very possible with that schedule and everything else. It's, it's definitely, no, it's definitely possible with that yeah. schedule, but I also think that we're looking at an, a very incomplete Chiefs team from yeah. where they are now to where they'll be uh, week one. We are. Yeah, I, yeah. I think it's a little bit, un, it's probably a little bit unfair to make a, a, a judgment call on them at this moment. Um, a little bit, yes. We have to see what they do with all the resources they just got from Tyree Kill, of course. Um, same with the Packers. The Packers, like the Ty Devontae Adams trade, is like the other thing that is that is like the comparison here. And 
that, that wasn't a great move for the Packers either because they're kind of in win now mode, extending Rodgers, and they traded Adams away. But at least with them, um, I don't they're think in they an easier division. Like it really does feel like Devontae for a year let it be known that he, he wasn't signing or yeah. like they were just miles away. Yeah, I just and, don't like, think he wanted to be in Green Bay. I just don't honestly. think he wanted to be Green Bay. And like there's nothing you can do with that. And with Tyreek, maybe there was nothing they could do. Maybe like maybe truly they know something we don't. They they know him. I don't know him, but they knew that he just was he was he was serious and he was just never ever gonna play for them again and he just wanted to be in Miami that bad. But I, it just seems like three hours was a little bit of a, a difficult, <laughs> like it just seems like a div- decision that was made in three hours. So overall, like I think the dolphins will be a lot better for it. I think that that like in Teron Armstead as well, um, played with the saints and Drew Brees always got the ball out quickly. So, and like who is going to get the ball out quickly. He doesn't need a block for that crazy long. And he's good enough to never lose. If that's kind of the case, <laughs> like he's never going to instantly lose. So right. that's going to be really good. And yeah, Hill is going to be really good. I think Tua can run thing. I again, I'm not a big Tua guy, but I think that he can keep that offense. He can do well enough in that offense to be efficient. Well, and let's let's yeah. go through the AFC real quick, and let's. I mean, like the Bills, we would say probably win the East, right? Yes. Then who comes in second? Either the Dolphins or the Patriots. I think the Jets might be a little bit slept on, but I don't know if they're going to be second in that division. I think it goes Bills. Bills, I would maybe say Dolphins second. I think the Patriots are not as screwed as everybody thinks they are, but with all the talent on the Dolphins right now and what they just did with Tyreek Hill, I might have Dolphins seconds, Patriots third. And I okay. think the Jets still finish fourth. I still think the Jets finish I think fourth. Th- I think they're a little bit closer, though. I think they're at least competitive this year. Um, you take a look at the, the West. The West is obviously brutal. Uh, you have the Chargers... Broncos, Chiefs, and Raiders, and I don't even know if you could pick out a winner in that. Between one of them. them. One of them. So, so I think I, we should make these picks closer to the season. I think yeah, these are going to yeah. change it's, as it's the draft so, happens. It's like so crazy. The North, I saw some people stuffing the Browns like coming last, and um, the South is the South is all over the place because of like the Colts and the Titans. I, the Titans are. I the think. Titans are, kind of incomplete right now too i think we're not, right now i'm most concerned of the team with like expectations i'm a little bit concerned for maybe the bengals chiefs and maybe the colts perhaps i don't know but the bengals there's a lot offensive of teams with line ex- bengals offensive line much improved I, I cannot remember a time where it's like there are teams that are trying to make a run in the playoffs that i'm not even sure gonna get there there's like a lot <laughs> Yeah, and maybe so, even, if you don't, even if you don't count the Dolphins, there's like three teams in each division that's yeah. like, yeah, we we should win. Meanwhile, the the NFC is like <laughs> <laughs> a little. Will the Lions, could the could the Lions sneak into what? that seven? What is very the Lions? Weak schedule, I'm pretty sure. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh man, we'll probably have to do a full episode about you know yeah, what this is, every. This is a little early for this how conversation. To, how to sort out Absolutely. the AFC after the draft, but. Definitely a huge move. I, I I like it for the Dolphins a decent amount. I don't love paying wide receivers this much, but like I've said before, I, Tyreek Hill is a little bit of a of a special case, and I, I think that he offers things that no other wide receiver in the league offers, and he's kind of a rarity and a special player like that. So absolutely, I do like it a decent amount for the Dolphins. The Chiefs, I like. I get it. I do. Playing a wide receiver that much is just tr- a tricky business. And I think there is something to be said for the fact that everybody else is all in in the AFC. And maybe like Mahomes is going to be there for another decade, right? So maybe mm-hmm. in two years it comes to like, okay, we're back. We've retooled. Everybody else is kind of, you know, a little bit weak because they made their run this year when it's not even smart to make a run because it's so stacked. But like I can maybe see that being the logic. But overall, just losing a guy like Tyreek Hill is just brutal. It's brutal. Especially like Kelsey's getting up there in age at this point and you're wondering how much yeah. time does he have left? No, don't let's but. not worry about Kelsey. <laughs> That's not, let's not slander Kelsey through all this. He's having I'm not slandering Kelsey. He's still you, you know are. top top cool. 2 tight like, end. Top 2 tight like, end. Like, how long does he stay Regardless of how the rest end? of the offseason plays out, I'm picking the Buffalo Bills to win the Super Bowl again. Fair. Fair. I think uh they're kind of stacked. They're kind of they're stacked. St- they're they're well, stacked. But what if the Las Vegas Raiders won the Super Bowl instead? 
then the Bills wouldn't. Devonte, <laughs> and then the Bills would not win the Super Bowl. <laughs> Devonte gets a ring, but Ad- but or uh, Rogers doesn't. I don't know. Hey, I, either way, W trade for the Dolphins in my book. But you know what else is a W trade? Trade Coffee. Trade coffee. Stay Hot's newest sponsor. And you know one thing I love about Trade Coffee. I don't know about you guys, but if if you don't like the coffee that that they send you, you can just send it back for free. If you're like, oh, I didn't like this brand of coffee. Let me just get a different one. It's nice to have that security, no doubt. But I just can't imagine that happening where they send me something that isn't some of the best coffee I've ever had. Exactly. It's like, oh, well, I'm going to get good coffee. But in the in like the 1% scenario that I don't, guess what? I can get a different good coffee. But, you know, Trade Coffee connects customers to the freshest and best tasting coffee they've ever made at home by partnering with some of the co- with some of the country's best craft roasters. They're an independent business from big cities and small towns. You know, Trade customers are are truly impactful for these independent roasters, often being so, the largest source of new growth for them. You know, it's expert tasted coffee. You know, Trade's coffee team, you know, actually taste tests thousands of coffees to keep 400, 450 different kinds live and ready to ship every single day. There's no one perfect coffee, but there is a perfect coffee for you. And Trade's human powered algorithm will find it. Trade's first match guarantee, you know, they're so confident that they won't match you right the first time that. If they don't, you know, like we said, they'll take your feedback and actually, and an actual coffee expert will work with you to send a brand new bag for free. You know, Trade delivers a bag of freshly roasted coffee, you know, whether it's whole beans or ground, for however you brew it at home, and they guarantee you'll love it, or again, your first order is replaced for free. Trade has delivered over 5 million bags of fresh coffee with more than 750,000 positive reviews. Right now, Trade is offering new subscribers a total of $30 off your first order plus free shipping when you go to drinktrade.com slash stay hot. That's more than 40 cups of coffee for free. Thea, what could you do with 40 cups of free coffee? I could, you know, I could... Paint. Paint. <laughs> I could paint. I could paint. I could I'd have enough energy to draw and paint and go on runs and uh oh, still do the football stuff and I could go bird watching and I could there's so many hobbies and things that I want to do and you know I just don't always have the before trade coffee I didn't always have the energy to do it, but now I do and I am just a very well rounded person now. So you could do That's a lot what of different things. Since- since we've gotten these trade coffee packages, I feel like Theo's been more well-rounded since. He really has. Yes, of course. My whole life has been unlocked. So, yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe I'll finish my album now that I've trade coffee. You can get started. I thought you already finished that. You said it's done, didn't you? It is done. It is done. But it's like I have to re-record everything to send it then to my... To send then my it is that's very done, much not opinion. done. Well, I've recorded <laughs> half the songs. Uh, I, just oh, have to, oh. <laughs> I have to re-record everything and send it to my producer so that he can reproduce everything. Okay, so it's not even <laughs> close to done. But he can produce. He can produce a song in like a day. So it's like, okay. It, <laughs> All right. Anyway, well, speaking of the NBA, speaking well, of speaking the of, NBA, we'll go, again, get started by taking <laughs> Trade Coffee's quiz at drinktrade.com slash stay hot and let Trade find the coffee you'll love. Again, that's drinktrade.com slash stay hot for $30 off. Speaking of the NBA, um, th- stuff's going down. <laughs> Celtics are the best team in basketball. Sadly, uh, <laughs> like I said, after the they, they Sacramento made the most Kings under- clear, I fear. Hey, the Boston Celtics, after they made the Derek White trade, we talked about all the deals at the deadline, and I said that was the most underrated move at the deadline. And Derek White is not the reason they've turned things around at all, but I'm going to pretend that kind of coincides with them being the hottest team in basketball, so I'm going to pretend it is and say I was right on that. But, hey, Celtics Eastern Conference Finals take, I, I'm really liking what they're doing. I think, again, the baseline of defense, that the, the defensive performance that they have been able to sustain over the past couple months, really since 2020 started, has been 
ridiculous. Like Rob Williams and and Smart and you know Tatum and Brown. There's a lot of versatility on who everybody can guard, and they've just been locking teams up. And on top yep. of that, on top of that, you've got maybe the best one of the best shot creators in basketball. The best one of the best shot makers in basketball in Tatum. Brown can Brown can hit his fair share of shots as well. So you've got guys who can get a bucket in the tight defense of the playoffs, and you've got the tight defense of the like defense wins championships. So I think that they're incredibly dangerous. I think like if they match up with the, the Bulls in the first round, that's a that's a easy series win for the Celtics in my opinion. Um, really, any team in the East could could fall to this Celtics team in my I opinion. See them, and I'm I'm really high on that. I want to see them go up against the Bucks. I think that would be an interesting matchup. And it I agree. Be. It's just some of the defensive lineups I can put out where it's like Smart and Brown and Tatum and Williams. It's like dude. Yeah. Um and that that's that's very much a team that's built for the playoffs. And if if they continue to move the ball like they have been a little bit recently where I feel like they've had gotten a little bit out of that sort of Lakers style play where it's like all right, we're going to give the ball to this guy. He's going to take a shot. Like, And you want to do that stuff sometimes, obviously. you got Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. But they can just limit that enough that if you can like go with the ISO stuff and still try to play real basketball and score in other ways, they're in a very good position because they have guys who can hit tough shots. They have guys who have done it before in the playoffs, and they have guys who can defend and are very switchable. And that's all the, I mean, that's the checklist of things that you want in a playoff team. Yeah, definitely. Still, the I think still with with playmaking, they could maybe move it around even a little bit more than they I do. Agree. But uh, that that might be their downfall. Like is is when they go up against maybe the toughest teams in the league, they go back to to kind of where they were. Their falls kind of before this. They have a new coach, right? This is not Brad Stevens anymore. So maybe in the playoffs, when the pressure is on, they just kind of revert back to like well, and kind of desperation and and one on ones. But this is uh, the, the playoffs where right you now. see guys get out coached, you know. Yeah. So, um, I will say though, I think the ball does slow down a little bit more. I think everything plays in their favor going into the playoffs, and they're already playing good basketball. They're getting hot yeah. at the right time, um, for sure, for sure. So I, I, I'm a big fan of the Celtics. I have a question for you guys. So when when you look at like the Cavs at the beginning of the season were kind of the defensive team. They they were really cooking teams on inside defensively. Yeah. Um, but now they've, you know, and they, and they were like a high seed for a long time. They were the four seed, three seed at some point. And now they've kind of fallen, taken a step back. Whereas the Celtics have started to move up. What, what, what has been the biggest change in that? Jarrett yeah, Allen got hurt. Jarrett Allen got hurt. Their center all-star. He's been just absolutely locked down, extremely efe- efficient on the, on the like interior on offense and just locked down on defense. He got hurt. Uh, hurt his finger, I believe it was, and and you know Mobley's good and he's young, but just not quite enough. And there's just that that impact has, has yeah. definitely been felt. My for them. my thought was that Mobley and they was were the overperforming. Biggest, my biggest thing, I thought Mobley was the guy the whole time, but it turns out it was Allen. It, it, <laughs> and, and, and Mobley's really good, but they were also overperforming, and like it's just tough to surpass expectations the whole time. And then when you right. lose, arguably their your best player. It, regression plus that has really hit them hard so they still have a bright future of for sure sexton has been hurt as well maybe their other best player and allen those are two really high level players that are out for them really young team it's it's tough to survive for them um still a really nice season for them and even if they don't you know make the playoffs or they they end up in the plans and and lose in the first round or whatever happens to them you're still really excited about the celtics team but um just a couple a few too many obstacles for a team with that amount of talent to overcome in my, in my book. I think well, that's luckily been, though, you know, the, luckily LeBron will be back next year and everything will be okay. <laughs> wouldn't shock me. And if they, if they fall off a little bit and miss the playoffs, I think that makes that scenario a little bit more likely. Obviously if they end up being, if they were to have ended up being like the three seed, you may say, say like, why mess with it? Yeah. But if it's, you know, if you miss the playoffs, it's it's like, OK, maybe we could use someone like that. Maybe, <laughs> but, maybe, um, we'll maybe. But that's, <laughs> that's that's some that's, really that's some really big hypotheticals that we're discussing. That's what I'm here, but I, yeah, I think a lot of Cleveland fans also would like to be able to win without LeBron. No, definitely. That's, yeah. that's something I've, I've seen a lot of Cleveland fans talk about. One thing that we wanted to talk about, I think, though, is 
most improved player. I think the NBA has the goofiest awards. The <laughs> most improved player. You have defensive player of the year, but no offensive player of the year. And I, I understand why, but I just think that's funny. And you've got sixth man. Um, and John Morant, I believe, is the Vegas favorite by like the huge a Vegas million favorite. trillion. John Morant will win the award, is what we should say. Yeah. Um, but we were talking about whether or not DeMar DeRozan has a fair argument for it. It's an, I, what are the qualifications for most improved play? Like, what are improve. the. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay, but like, okay, could you have like been good His, before, fallen historically, off? Historically. <laughs> historically that's not the precedent which is why it's no. weird that you would think um DeRozan would win it because usually an DeRozan's a big name and an established star and he's made all-star games before right so he would never like someone with that type of precedent has never won the won the award before usually it's a, a young player who is like an all-star all of a sudden um, right who goes from a below it but like for DeRozan to be he hasn't been an all star since 2017. He hasn't been an all star since the 20 since he was in Toronto, and for him to go from you know a 31 year old like maybe someone who is declining to an MVP candidate is about as big of a jump as anyone has seen this year. Yeah, but I just don't think you give it to someone who has been an all star before and is now. You know, sounds yeah, like, I don't know. It I sounds know. like the NBA could use a comeback player of the year award. That one's a goof. That's goofier, in my opinion. The <laughs> NFL's comeback player of the year award because no, which it's just because it, got it, hurt last it's season. just because <laughs> of the way the NFL does it. If the NFL now didn't, it's going to be worst. What quarterback suffered the worst injury last year? Award is what it yeah, is. Yeah, that's that's all it is. is. But terrible. Like the, it's a the terrible NBA way would, the NBA things. wouldn't have that problem. Maybe not. Maybe not. But he also did, wasn't like, you know, he played last year. He did. Yeah. Okay. So maybe not. There's a there's a marriage I think it's between inter- the two. Most improved is someone who like couldn't walk last year. Like, oh, he had a torn ACL. He was on crutches. And this year he can not only walk, but he can play basketball at a high level. So the most improved players. I think DeRozan, DeRozan's an interesting case. I, I think it's a it's an interesting conversation to have, but I don't know if he quite well, qualifies. Well, it's just, it's, it's, he's not quite there probably. Because with Ja, you've seen him go from also not an all-star to Probably also first team All NBA. I think the award favors guys who are like just now, like you know, Demar Derozan's yeah. been All NBA before, so maybe that's kind of against the spirit of the award. But I do think there is some. I don't know wh- where his odds sit, but I can't imagine they're any lower than number two because he went from a guy who was getting called. I don't think that he's like even on the. I think see that's that's ridiculous. That's insane. He went from a guy who was called the worst signing in free agency, and I. It was not that was not an unpopular opinion. That wasn't oh some this one guy one place one article. He went from a guy who people thought was uh, had a, had a play style that just didn't fit the modern NBA and couldn't go be effective and couldn't lead a team and was just not going to be a good fit in Chicago too. He has a legitimate case for first team all NBA. He is going to get some MVP votes, and he's the reason why a very hurt Chicago Bulls team is in the playoffs right now. If they didn't have Demar, I don't know where they'd be seated. Probably in the plans. So to say that he's not even he's not even close to most improved. He's not even what top five and like where. Oh, he's not even top 10. Tyler Hero, it goes Morant, Garland, Bridges, DeJounte Murray, Afrani S- Simons, Tyrese Maxey, Desmond Bain, Tyler Hero are the top ones, and those go up to plus 10,000. Morant, on the I agree. Thing. Darius Garland, that's a tough one. I'd have to like, I, I can guess. get behind it. Gar- no, Garland makes sense. Miles Bridges? <laughs> Went from border, like, could maybe be an all-star to could maybe be an all-star. Miles Bridges is not more, I'm saying this as a Charlotte Hornets fan. Miles Bridges was, he's gotten better, but at the back half of last season, he was playing very, very good basketball. He was. There's no, I, I think there's just no way you could tell me he's more improved than DeMar DeRozan. It's com- and this is, this is I made a, a, a video about this the other day. NBA awards have these bizarro, like, baseball-like 
unwritten rules where certain guys are actually not allowed to win. And there's these other <laughs> trying to explain this to somebody who didn't watch basketball would be impossible. Trying, trying Bro, to explain I, the nuances. I barely of watch the basketball and like impossible. I'm con- <laughs> Oh, Bladen, a, a second year player cannot win the award. Wait, can't win most improved player. Most improved player doesn't go to second year players because that's considered like the leap from being like a rookie to then like a second. Isn't the, isn't the I, I don't NBA, know if that's, doesn't the NBA also like give rookie of the year awards to, yeah. to the second a year second player? Year, a second year player cannot <laughs> win most improved, oh, but, yeah. can but they can win of rookie year. of the year. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it's just <laughs> in, the NBA awards don't make any sense. I forget what the qualification or you can be playing 30 minutes a night and win sixth man of the year. You can be top five in minutes for your team. I think Clarkson was <laughs> last year and or or uh, one team can have multiple sixth man of the year candidates. None of it makes any sense. In the era of more like positionless basketball, everything gets harder because it's like, where does LeBron fit in a in a like first team all NBA? Is he a can I put him at point guard? Can I put him at small forward? Can I put him anywhere? Uh, or like stuff like that, or six man of the six man of the year, where it's like, well, he's not really a true six man. It's 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 more difficult because roles have just gotten less defined as players have gotten more athletic and have been able to fill more roles. So uh, it's it is funny. The NBA awards are funny. I've said this before, like too. It's it, as far as we're talking. If we're talking NBA awards, um, my hot take is that Embiid has it wrapped up is is my take that i was I've for mvp i see for i disagree MVP. with that and i think that he is the favorite to win it but to say that it's it's over is wrong there's 10 games left and it's very close it's very close but it, he doesn't need to pull away to win it like the way that things are going right now if it's close all that needs to happen is him to just be in the conversation and he's got it they don't want to give it to Jokic. They don't want to give it to Giannis. But, so but what if, needs if, to happen is one of those two guys needs to make their case undeniable in about a week and a half here, two weeks. And I just don't see that happening with with the way that they've been playing. So I think like Embiid right now, it seems like it's a close race. But if anyone else wins it that is not Joel Embiid, I would be incredibly surprised. I'd be very, very surprised. I think it's... Embiid's award right now. So, and, and so they're not giving it to Giannis, I assume, because voter fatigue. Voter fatigue for both, and like they, Embiid has been close and in the conversation a bunch of times, and he's truly having like a dominant year. It's not to say I, that yeah. it's not deserved by him, but in the case where it's close, it's probably going to Embiid, and I just don't see a world where it's not very close when the season wraps up. So. That's my take on here's, the NBA awards. Here's here's what I would say. It's the one thing that could really get in bead is if I think they're two and a half games ahead of the Nuggets, which in a 10 game stretch is a pretty reasonable, healthy lead. If that gets down to like one game or half a game, or if they go even at the end of the year, the 76ers and the Nuggets, it's really tough to argue that Embiid is the more valuable player if Jokic got led his team to the same record with considerably less help. It would be really, really tough. It would be. It would be. And on its, I, and it, Jokic is my MVP. I think it's really tough to argue that Jokic isn't the MVP right now with what the help that he's had and where they're at. I think that, it, like, realistically, I think it's tough to argue it right now. So, yeah, it would be tough to argue it if it if two more games get that gap gets closed by two games. But people are arguing it right now, and it's just it's like. But the thing is, like the average person, like the narratives play a little bit more into it, like, like the nuances get a little bit lost. And if it's and as simple as okay, he's better, like then it gets it, everything changes. Even though right. realistically, it's not that much of a gap. But if if it does, it does matter for 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 narrative purposes, which is a big. And deal. I don't disagree. I don't disagree. At my my at the end of the day. If Embiid gets his flowers from this season, I'm not going to be any worse off. No, of course not. Of course not. Of course not. Of course just, not. Yeah. Because uh, he's had – It's we're not talking about some dude who's going to be, just be undeserving. Like, this is a guy who's had an MVP level season who hasn't gotten one yet. And my thought – what I'm telling myself is that Embiid has been an MVP level player for a while, and he can just never quite stay 
healthy enough yeah. to actually get the thing. It's been a few years now. He just can't. It's like you miss 15 games, and it's like that's just too many to win the award. So, But he's been healthy this year. But he's been healthy, so okay. If he gets it this year, fair enough. With how with how wishy washy the MVP award always is, it's not like it's some. This is the first time it maybe goes to the second best player or the guy I think is maybe the second having the second best season or whatever. Embiid is done, like give him his flowers for sure. I mean, for yeah. sure, you look at like even statistically, him and Giannis are basically putting up the same numbers. It's like if you're gonna if it comes down to that, Theo, you're probably right that they just give it to the guy that that hasn't gotten it yet, as opposed yeah. to giving it to Giannis or Jokic again. Yeah, right. Right. It it really is a close race, but yeah, that's uh, it's far because it's close. I don't know. It's it's a weird thing, but... <laughs> it's far because it's close. It's close. It's, it's, it's very much <laughs> like, Embiid's award because it's close. It can't be close for it to be not Embiid's award. That's, that's just where I could fall on it. But any other NBA topics? I, I can't really think of any. Mavericks look really good recently. Could we maybe go on a run mm-hmm. in the West? They're about as healthy as any Western Conference team. Do you think there's Chris pressure? Paul comes back tonight, though. Do you think there's so. pressure on Luka to make it out of the first mm-hmm. round? I saw. Um, <laughs> Do we, yeah, I, I think there's. Yeah, I Jefferson. think there might be a little bit of pressure. <laughs> there's probably a little bit of pressure. <laughs> I was. I saw. I think Channing Fry and, and Richard Jefferson debating this. And my thought, uh, my thought process was, I might make it just a TikTok on this, but there's pressure on Luca to play well. But if he plays well and they don't make it out of the first, I don't think that anyone's going to blame him or anything. This isn't LeBron. Like people will say, be reasonable about. <laughs> people will be yeah. reasonable about that type of stuff. But it's like if yeah. they go up against, I don't know, if the Mavs go up Depends against on the, the Jazz, Mavs, Matt. if they go up against the Jazz, people will be picking them to win for sure. The popular yeah. pick will be the Mavericks, 100%. And if Dinwiddie and Brunson and all those guys are playing well, like the expectation will be that the Mavericks make it to the second round. And a lot of people have them going to the Western Conference Finals. So I think there is a lot of pressure on the Mavericks. There are. There is a lot of pressure on the Mavericks. And there is a lot of pressure on... You can only get so many first-round exits as someone who's supposed to have an argument for the best player in the world before people are like, eh, he's not... Okay, you're balling in the regular season. It's not going to mean anything in the playoffs. He's not it a never winner, means, though. He's not a winner, and it doesn't never means anything in the playoffs. He doesn't, he doesn't have that dog <laughs> in him. <laughs> he doesn't have that dog in him. It, so it definitely will matter if he gets first-rounded again. And the Mavericks, this is as good of a Mavericks team and as good of a chance as they do have. Um, like these Clippers teams that they've run into in the past couple of years have just been the better team and, and should beat them in seven. But this year, yeah, I, I do think that they're, they, I mean, they're, the, they're going to be a popular pick and yeah, you definitely fair or deserving or not. He is definitely going to have a lot of pressure on him in the first round and um, more so than the other years for sure. There's only so many first round exits that, that he can, that he can with that his brand can endure. And he doesn't have the expectations of a LeBron. He doesn't have the expectations of a, of a Chris Paul. He doesn't have the expectations of a, K, like a KD and there's been yeah, a lot of not, other guys to kind yet, of take sure. take the the weight off Luca's so- shoulders and Luca has not ever fallen short of expectations even in the playoffs even when he does get first rounded Luca himself goes crazy in the playoffs so yeah it's probably not going to be as bad but there're definitely going to be some uh some jokes and some like writing off of Luca as someone who just never gets it done um which which it wouldn't be fair but it's going to happen if he gets first rounded yeah. again it is what it is but I think we want to hop into some March Madness, but before we do that, I just want to remind everyone that did you know that Underdog Fantasy lets you participate in March Madness even if your bracket is already busted? (sighs) Mind blown. You know, this episode, as always, has been brought to you by Underdog Fantasy, the fastest growing fantasy app ever. Underdog Fantasy lets you draft a fantasy team in just minutes, and like I mentioned, March Madness is here, and the quickest way to get in on the action is through Underdog's Pick'em Game. You can pick an over or under on two to five different players' stats, and you can win up to 20 times your money in a single night. And again, if your bracket's already busted, this is a great way to get back into the tournament, make some extra cash, because you know if you're anything like me, your bracket is fucked. Just totally screwed. Make sure you use the code STAYHOT when you sign up, and you'll get your first deposit doubled when you head over to underdogfantasy.com and use their mobile app. Again, that's code STAYHOT at underdogfantasy.com or their mobile app. Let's talk about some March Madness because we're in the Sweet 16 now. And uh, there's, there's, you know, 
St. Peter's going <laughs> going to the final four? Not looking This is so a little impossible. tough to talk about <laughs> because we're recording. The game's starting about an hour. Yeah. And then whatever we say about these four games will be irrelevant when this episode comes out. Well, I'll say this. How it goes, you know? Judge me, people of the future who know the results of what I'm about to say. Here are my bets. All right. I parlayed this. Villanova money line over Michigan. I get that Michigan has been a, a Cinderella over these past couple weeks here. Um, but I'm, I, I think their run ends here with Villanova. I think that this is a – we've seen Villanova and Michigan match up recently. It was a title game when they matched up to like win the whole thing and Villanova won then. They will defend – they will honorably defend their title. Um, really good free throw shooting team. I think like – Michigan has never won that. This is the first time all year they've won like two in a row or the first time in a long time they've won two in a row. So to win like three and go on a run like three in a row against the teams they've gone up against, they've they've had a brilliant run. But to win three in a go in row here when they haven't like basically done that all year, I think it ends here. My Villanova pick is in. And then I've also bet Arkansas plus 10. I think they cover the spread against Gonzaga, who I don't think was as strong as they were last year. I think Gonzaga is flirting with losing every single... I mean, they might win the whole thing, but I think they might flirt with losing every game. You know, I, I they, they might end up being the better team in every game, but I don't think that they are quite as dominant as the spreads make them out to be. I won on the Memphis spread last week. So, people of the future, Villanova and Arkansas covering the spread. We'll see what happens. If I was a betting man... And I'm not because I'm 20 and I don't live in a state where that's legal. But if I was, um, Gonzaga won it all, whatever the line on that is. Uh, Gamecocks won it all, women's bracket, whatever the line on that is. Heard it here first. W. No one's picked. How much, Matt, hypothetically, how much money would you put on that uh, if you were to do that? <laughs> I'd have to see the odds, but I feel like, honestly, the the chances of both those things happening are pretty darn good. Because the Gamecocks are sick in, in the women's bracket, and Gonzaga is the number one overall seed. But if that was like plus, what would it? Maybe you can check. I don't know if you can parlay Matt, those. Correct things. me if I'm wrong. Didn't South Carolina win the women's bracket like kind of recently? They're yes. really good. I think they won a game like I saw a score of like seventy-seven to fourteen. I think on Jesus one of their games yes. recently. The yes. Yeah. <laughs> they're no, they're, they're, they're nice. a powerhouse in women's basketball. Yeah, they're really really good. They're really good. Um, I think who's you so Gonzaga is your bet to win the whole thing um, now mm -hmm. I still think they lose one I just don't think it's the strongest team from them that we've seen so I don't think I'm gonna bet on them I might go with uh, Texas Tech to go on a little bit of a run here I think that I have they're them really beating good. Duke if that means anything to you I also have bet on them beating Duke Duke was my only final four team in the bracket but the way that they've looked and I think the qual I think my bracket's gonna be wrong again and Duke is not gonna make it to the final four and I'm gonna go 0 for 4 on my final four teams but I like the way that Texas Tech has been playing I think they've got the the tools to beat Duke here and send Coach K into retirement and then I think they can go on to beat Gonzaga I really do so I might take Texas Tech is I always try to be a little bit different, I guess, but I think Texas Tech makes it into the final four. I think Purdue might make it into the, I think that they've been playing really well as well. Um, St. Peter's, they have a relatively easy, even though St. Peter's has been a phenomenal run. They have a relatively easy 6-16. Don't talk, about my, 16. Like that, Don't talk hey, about my team like that. They're probably losing to Purdue. I think they have, <laughs> so I think that they've got as good of a chance as anybody to make it into the final four out of that conference there. And then maybe, I don't know who else, but <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, those are my predictions, but I've been wrong on everything so far. So take me with a enough. grain of salt. I had, uh, if we want to talk about my my original bracket, which is still decent good. enough, where I I want to cross my fingers for it. My big upset was Houston over Arizona. I have Houston going to the Final Four, um, mainly because I saw them on my Twitter timeline one too many times. <laughs> I'm like, well, they've got to win now. But um, God. that's the upset I'm looking for. Gonzaga is plus 240 to win the whole thing. That's really so. not that awesome of odds. Yeah. It's for winning over the twice. Turn, for winning four straight plus 240, that's kind of terrible odds. And it's going to be against all really hard teams from here on out. It's yes. like Arkansas, yeah. Texas Tech, or Duke. Someone else in the final four, which unless it's St. Peter's is going to be 
a difficult matchup. Texas Tech is at plus one thousand five hundred. I'll throw ten dollars on that. Right. You know. Yeah. yeah. Why not? What's Saint anyway, Peter's? Saint Peter's is at uh, plus thirty five thousand. Is what they're at. Oh. But, they're not winning the whole thing, though. You would be throwing your money away. So I would not bet on that <laughs> well, one. Well, here's the thing. They're the only team left in my final four. So <laughs> <laughs> didn't you pick all the 15 seeds? No, I picked all the I picked all the 16 seeds to win in the first round. And then after that, I picked teams that were based on um, how uh, close they it? were to. No, it was like points off turnovers. Uh like blocks per game, like so the Bladen defense wins championships. Formula. <laughs> the Bladen defense Kirk wins formula. championships. Defense wins championships. It, uh, basically, how I would run a basketball team is what I based it on. It would be great defense and just like you know cherry picking off turnovers. <laughs> There's been a lot of talk about Chet Holmgren uh, from like he's been an interesting guy to watch his draft stock. Yes. I don't like you hate you wait no me. I hate him. I don't hate him. <laughs> you know, you've, you've just said that you don't think he has a skill set of somebody uh, who would be any good. <laughs> I watch. Look, I don't hate him, but look around the NBA and look for someone built like Trent Holmgren and you're not going to find him. You know, you're just not. It's it's a rare body type and kind of a bad way. Um, so I don't think like he's worth like the number one overall pick or something. But if he return, he does. And the other thing is nothing is forcing him to come out of school yet i don't know is he expected to be in this next draft class i don't know uh but right now i guess that's my main thing is i haven't been like he was someone i was like okay i, I don't know much about college basketball prospects I, like point blank period but he's someone where i'm like okay he hasn't beat the allegations to me yet uh as far as being a prospect i see it with him i think you do um, okay i i this is not my comp for him but in the same way that being an elite interior defender plus being able to do a lot of nice stuff on offense. And maybe, maybe this is not right, but like Dwight Howard was really important to Orlando, but he was really better on defense than he was on offense. And that's not usually how a top prospect is, is, you know, value. like usually you want someone who's going to like be that guy on offense and Holmgren isn't that. Um, and again, he's not Dwight Howard. That's not what I'm saying, but I think that his defensive timing is so just ridiculous. I mean, some of the blocks that he has, he's so ahead of where it looks like a, like a little kid um, getting blocked or whatever. I think the big thing with him is like, yeah, that interior defense, his timing and his mobility is is that valuable. I mean, you talk about like, yeah. okay, who has a body type like him? Evan Mobley is kind of similar and he's yeah, been really, that's, really that's great. Where, that's exactly where my head went. Like at first I was like, okay, you know, do you think about like, massive like almost seven footers with that are like with a small frame like first guy that comes to mind is kevin durant we're like okay but kevin durant doesn't play center so then the next guy that comes to mind is evan mobley and they were like oh he's gonna be too small he's gonna get pushed around but that hasn't been the case yeah mobley and but yeah mobley was too small and chet but, is still substantially smaller yeah, and, and, exactly, mobley, that's what, and, t- and mobley is 20 pounds of muscles a lot dude if yes, you if you're yeah. working out and you put on 20 pounds of muscle that's like a lot of work for you. Like you just yeah. went crazy with that. So that's what Mobley offers over Chet. But I mean, I do see like, you look at where Giannis was when he first got in the league and where he's at now. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's, I mean, he's a yeah. tank now. He's an absolute tank now. KD, where he was at when he first got in the league versus where he's at now. Still a re- really skinny, thin guy, but like you got to expect like Chet now is not what he's going to look like in five years. And he still may be a skinnier guy, but mm-hmm. You you do no, got it like he's not gonna get like if someone backs into him, it's not going to just f- cause him f- going flying across the court. You know, <laughs> like he he still is gonna be like in a position. But and I, people I think are like if, always like. And the other thing is, I guess with the NBA is like, oh, Embiid would dominate him. Like, oh, he wouldn't be able to hold up against Giannis. Everybody gets dominated by Embiid. Like, of course, <laughs> like not every center is Embiid. You don't get a guy because he can stop Embiid. No one can stop Embiid. But like, can Chet stop? Maybe. Just the can he stop DeAndre Ayton? Can he stop you know just your average right. center like starting center? So that, I mean, Embiid, I guess maybe Embiid and Giannis sense. can't even stop each other. So like, what makes you think right that like some it's, rookie's going to be able to? I think if if you look at a guy and he has like a valuable skill set, and you're like, okay, but he's not quite the size that we. He's like maybe he needs to put on some weight. 
I feel like that's a that's something that you're like, we'll deal with that. We can we can feed him. We can we can get him in the weight room. Yeah. Especially so, like how old is he? Nineteen? Come on. Yeah, I have mixed feelings on him, Matt. You are right that like he does like his his IQ on defense and just his knowledge of like when to jump and where to be is is really impressive. But he does he does need to put on like he does need to put on some weight. He does need to put on some weight because there's just not that many people who look like him. But as this conversation has gone on, I'm talking into him, talking myself into him a little bit more. Um, um, I just realized like NBA draft prospects are officially younger than us. Oh yeah, NFL That's, draft pro- Penny Penny Sewell was younger than me last year. Damn, Nicobe Dean. <laughs> Nicobe Dean's younger. Than, yeah, he's, we just talked to him. Most of them, yeah. are, n- not most of them. I mean, there are uh, we're juniors, so that's yeah. when guys start to declare. So there, our grade is going into the draft now. And, it's like the first time <laughs> that's like. Yeah, no, like, I had that. Sewell was the first guy I looked at. I was like, oh yeah, I'm younger. I'm younger than. Uh, I'm younger than. Or I'm older than Sewell. So that was crazy. But you know, now I can. Now I can say like, oh, I love this kid. Like I'm an old grizzled vet, <laughs> vet scout. Oh, this kid, he's got it. <laughs> I haven't, so yeah, now we're officially old heads. Officially I remember, old heads. I remember. <laughs> Back in my day. What do you know about Dwayne Bow? What do you know about, uh, what do you know about Jordy Bri- Nelson? Brian Hartline. <laughs> what do you know about those under- underrated old, old, the old legend, uh, oh. John Abraham. But, uh, yeah. Also, one more thing before we wrap up. Shout out North Macedonia, uh, knocking out Italy in the World Cup qualifiers. Italy just, I believe, won the Euros, which is like the big European Cup. And they're not going to qualify for the World Cup anymore because North Macedonia just knocked them out with a like a last minute goal in soccer. I know nobody cares about soccer here. Soccer is an underrated sport. I don't care what anybody says. The World Cup fucking rocks. I only watch it during the World Cup, but I've kept a little bit of an eye on the on the on the on the World Cup qualifiers and that just happened, which is one of the best upsets of all time. So shout out North Macedonia. I only saw the game winning goal, but that's a historic sports moment that everybody in the world cares about, except for the United States. So I was about to say, say, you just said you said soccer is an underrated sport. Like it's not the most popular sport in the world. It's underrated here. <laughs> it's the most popular. It's not even underrated here. It's underrated, like on this podcast. It is underrated in the US. like within it our is. fan base. It's underrated, but like in terms of like in the U.S. and around the world, it's not underrated. Most people love soccer. Soccer, yeah, it's not underrated, obviously, (laughs) but in the United States, it is. (laughs) Soccer is, look, soccer is made by the fans and like the the pageantry of soccer is just absolutely not matched by anything anywhere. It's it's an amazing, amazing like fan base in soccer and then like the the events the event of soccer is what makes Theo, it so Theo good said all opinion, fans are the same except for soccer fans soccer all fans are fans. different all football <laughs> yeah all american fans are the same soccer fans in in europe are not the same as american fans here but anyway i digress right, go north well. macedonia shout out them well unless you guys have anything else i think that pretty much wraps things up for us as always tons and tons of content coming away on all platforms we will be back Monday to talk probably some more draft prospects. I imagine not sure what position we'll hit on next. Actually leave in the comments, what position you want us to talk about next. Don't miss out on all the great content coming away on all platforms. As always from corn boy, bird boy, and lemon boy, we will catch you all on the flip and flop. <laughs> <laughs>